we go. There we go. Hello, everybody. How are you? It is uh, Monday. It is our Monday pop-up show uh, going out over, uh, let's see here. It's going out over um, 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 uh, Facebook. Yeah. And uh, let me just make sure it's going okay. Uh, let me see here. Just got to check it over here and see that it's going out okay. Uh, yeah, let me see here. Is it going out okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. There we go. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that everything was doing itself right. And let's start bringing in some people here. Admit all. Okay. There's nobody phony there. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. There's Charlene. There's Paula. There's Charlie. Uh, there's Len. There's Edward Berger. And I'm sure other people will join us as we uh, get going here. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Hello. Yeah, there they are, folks. There's, uh, uh, let's see, out in California is Len LaFrisco, but California, as we know it, has become utterly biblical. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I mean, you get you get all these uh, storms, tornadoes. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, fires. A uh, locust. Uh, are you getting locusts yet? <laughs> getting... Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, uh, we're supposed to get another big rainstorm overnight into tomorrow. Yeah. So California is getting very biblical on us. And uh, down there, uh, of course, in uh, Texas, they're biblical too. In a oh, yeah. different way, they interpret the Bible all wrong. So <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> it's, it's uh, uh, anyway. So I hear people are starting to come on. Here comes uh, Mike Chisholm. I had a very nice uh, uh, chat with Mike Chisholm the other day, which you can find on GabNet, in which he interviewed me for about two hours about Shecky and myriad of other things. Oh, look who's in her car. <laughs> wow. Is today a holiday? I don't think. Oh, yeah, she before. just she just posted on your page. She had a doctor's appointment or something. So oh, she... I see. OK. And then she signed on. Then she signed off. And here comes the uh, lovely, oh, lovely and attractive Marjorie Miller. Hey, hey, Marjorie. My uh, only uh, uh, falling apart wife. So <laughs> <laughs> every joint. Well, you know, I, 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 I bought her several years ago. In fact, eleven years ago today. I think it's eleven years ago today. Did you check the, the marriage Twelve. license? Twelve. Twelve. It's 12. <laughs> That's not what the picture says. They all look alike. No, 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 no. We have pictures <laughs> we took at Lake Tahoe when it had a time stamp on it and the time stamp, but I might have put them up later. I don't mm. know. But anyway, so um, uh, you, you're saying it's 12 years we've been married? 11 or 12. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It seems like 12. Hasn't the warranty <laughs> like expired by now? <laughs> seems like forever now uh we uh however it is our wedding anniversary hello there mandy hi hi uh, uh, uh <laughs> we uh, you're going to a doctor's appointment are you i just got out i didn't know if i'd be out in time i commented on your post that um, okay. yeah but i'm done how's your health they like to scare the crap out of you i know that <laughs> <laughs> i know i've been through it Anyway, I was saying that today is Marjorie and Alex's wedding anniversary. Yay! Yay. We don't know how many years it is. <laughs> Can you not remember when you got married? Like what year and do the math? Somewhere well, around then. I have a picture of our of our little wedding ceremony at Lake Tahoe. And the timestamp is uh, uh, 2012. Okay. okay. So that would make it 11 years. Right. Yeah. But she says it's 12. No, I, whatever you say, Alex, is fine. I don't know. I don't care. But anyway, we gave each other a really nice present today. Uh, matching um, cortisone shots. <laughs> <laughs> so sexy. Which is, which is what you give each other at this age, you know. Thank you so much for my cortisone shot, dear. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we have to look forward to, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, is it? What, what's happening with uh, Vernon's? Uh, he had a problem to... last week too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you have I to go... putting a different webcam on here, and it's actually goofy too. Wow. 
Wow. wow. Is that something to do with the machine? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, this is my Logitech right here, but then it starts going goofy. Look at that. Look how goofy it goes. Oh, wow. He's trying to send those Morse code signals. There you go. <laughs> if you're CB, okay, CB. blink twice. CB, CB. It's, it's been a long time since he was at his Morse code uh, station. I know. And, and you used to like beep stuff out to us all the time. Yeah. You're going to settings there. Stop video first. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we're, we, we've married 12, 12, 11, I don't know. Somewhere around there. It's, it's, um, it certainly has been a wonderful, are you, were, are you happy you made this decision to marry me? It's been a good ride. <laughs> it's been a good ride. Yes. <laughs> That's the best you can come up with? That's it a, nice, have, that's a nice expression. <laughs> it's been a good ride what what am i an amusement <laughs> that's a compliment it's a compliment would you take it as a compliment charlie i think yeah. what, she, what she's trying to say was that you're like disneyland it's a small world <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long did you date before you got married maybe that will help with the math about 20 years it was a long time all the time oh, four or five years four, four or five, five years, years. and Seriously? Your girlfriend Seriously? On your yeah and she yeah she proposed to me she, on leap day wow yeah well on leap day a woman can propose to the guy right <laughs> so she proposed to me and tell him tell him how i replied when you said will you marry me i'll think about it no i didn't <laughs> say that i didn't say that what I said was much better than that. I said, What'd you say? Couldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at this age, see, the thing is, this marriage is a good marriage because at this age, the last thing you even think about is divorce. Because, I mean, come on, how useless is that? Yeah. Because uh, at this age, you don't give a shit. Right. That's why second marriages are so successful. You don't have to deal with the kids and with all that other silliness, whatever you've established. Yeah, but second marriages, life. second marriages still many times are younger. And so you yeah. then have kids and you make the whole same mistake all over. Yeah, yeah no, I'm talking, as long as you're over 50 or something, the second marriage. And, uh, yeah, uh, 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 Charlene. I was going to say, I've been married for 41 years. Nice. Wow, good for you. 49 and a half. Wow. Wow. Uh, Watch out, we're catching up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, I hope you never do. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I'm, Charlie. I'm, okay, so what, you know, they always ask you this, what do you, what do you attribute your long marriage to? Well, murder we're, being illegal? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Truly, that could be at some point. Um, I think, I don't know, I don't, we just have been down, you know, we've gone down the path and we've gone away from the path and we've come back to the path. You know, we've just never just stoyed all the way away. I mean, there've been ups, there's been downs, there's been goods and bads and we just have stuck it out. Yeah, well, here's what I've said, and this is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of what you're saying. I've always said that the secret to a long marriage is forgiveness. You know, yes, you're going to wind true. up forgiving a lot in the other person. And, uh, yeah. you know, and if you if you don't have that ability to forgive, you just give up immediately. Well, that's not that's not good. You know, that's mm -hmm. yeah, you just you got to just work on it. it's work. It's not it's not easy. It's work, but it's been worth it for me. So, yeah. How long you've been married, Scott? You look like you've been married a long time. Thirty three years. Wow. And Vernon? 49 and a half. God. Wow. Oh. Wow. You know, you give us hope. And how long were you married before your husband passed? Uh, uh, um, What's uh, your name? What's your name? Paula. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, Stan Lear? 43 years. 43 years before he passed. Right. So would you agree, all agree with me that, that let's see, oh, how long have you been married, uh, 
uh, uh, Mike. Uh, Candy and I got married the day that Marjorie proposed to you. We got married on Leap Day in 2012, so 11 years. Really? Oh, oh, oh. 11 years or like three years? <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and and Len, did I ask you yet? No, no uh, twenty-two to my first wife and eight to my current. Oh, okay, and uh, oh, I, of course, in his wonderful voice, we'll ask Edward Berger. <laughs> how long have you been married, Edward? Zero. I don't think he's been married. <laughs> really, you've never been married? Nope. Why? Uh. I think you have another. Right. You need another person. I think that's just the problem. Would you want to hear that joy <laughs> sex? Uh, I got news. For, I, I've got news for you, Edward. You don't need the other person. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I, I don't go into that. I'll, I'll buy a blow-up doll. Oh, <laughs> you seem like quite a catch until you probably get somebody into bed and whisper sweet nothings in her. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh boy! I mean, anybody I missed here? Uh, no. Oh, Mandy. Well, how long were you married the first time? I was married twenty-five. I would have been married thirty years this year. Wow. See, now, would you agree with me that the uh, the a long marriage is sometimes based on forgiveness? I mean, you've had even in those twenty-five years, I'm sure you had to forgive any number of times, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, and yeah. Just, I just think that people change too. If, if yeah. something happened to my husband, and I don't want to tell tales on him really, I know he's not going to see this, but the, the, he was a builder, a uh, developer, and a builder. And with that great recession, that really changed him. Oh, okay. All right. So mm -hmm. something happened kind of downhill and it kind of changed him. And yeah, he, he changed. He just, he really went inward and got depressed, and it was just hard to kind of you know, bring him back to the way he used to be. And, and we just grew apart. I mean, we're still friends. That's, that's why we're still friends. And, you know, yeah. I still care a lot about him and everything. So, yeah, I just, he, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I just I, didn't want to be married to him anymore. <laughs> you don't want to be married to him anymore. Okay. Yeah. And you were still pretty, you were still what, like around 52, I guess, 50, something like that. Oh, we went through that. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you were still kind of young. Right. You know, and you probably just said, hey, you know, there's. Yeah, I said we have so much life left. And of course, he was very upset about it, but he, he's got a girlfriend that he's been very happy with the whole time. So, yeah, he's, that, he's, doesn't, he's, that doesn't bother you at all. No, oh, I'm, okay. I'm very glad, actually. <laughs> you know, I'm very happy for him because he deserved that. Everybody deserves to be happy. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think Marjorie's the only wife I never cheated on. <laughs> uh, what? So far. So far. So no far. comment. What do we mean, no comment? <laughs> it's, it's just gotten to the point in my life where uh, companionship is the most important thing, you yeah. know, and having a good friend that you wake up to look at the next morning. And I'm, I'm still looking for that friend, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whoa. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I um uh, uh, uh many times I have a, a woman I might know or some woman who would call the show and say I'm divorcing my husband because he cheated on me. And I said, Well, that's not a good reason to break up with him. You know, that's just ego. What you gotta do is figure out why the cheating goes on and if you can live with it. And if you can live with it, if every I usually ask, how else is everything else in the marriage? And they go, great, except he cheated on me. I say, you're going to throw all that out? Am I wrong? You know, shouldn't you stick around a little bit? I mean, and try and get through that. And there, there in comes the forgiveness part of it. Yeah. Well, Bob was my best friend until he murdered my kid. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you're, saying, you're saying like cheating on you is like it's not a big deal. Um. Well, I mean, some things you can forgive and some things you can't forgive. Well, it depends on you, though. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, I could forgive my wife. I could forgive Marjorie for cheating. Not that I'm giving her the leeway, you know. <laughs> but no, I could. It's, at this age, it's too much effort. But she could, <laughs> believe me, she could, if I cheated, she couldn't forgive me. 
I oh, absolutely. Forgive. Women don't forgive. No, I've, I've, I've had women in my life. Who or forget. forget. Right. Oh, forgetting. Come on. You think of that as collateral. <laughs> you know, I, I, it, it, it's your, it's your uh, get even bank as it hey. were. You know, she she holds things back, back and then about 15 years later brings them up. Mm-hmm. Like, remember the time you blah, blah, blah. And we've gone through that before on this program. Well, the hospital, it's like you never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know where you got even with me? When I had to go to the hospital for my, uh, for my kidney stone, I went by myself. Who picked you up? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I had to take a taxi home because you didn't pick me up. <laughs> We're going to go through that again, aren't we? Yeah, you, you're never <laughs> going to win this one. Well, it was nice that this marriage lasted 11 years. Okay, that's yeah. all I have to say. And thank you so much for having them with me, Marjorie. And I'll see you soon. Happy <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> Actually, I'm just is, saying that's that, that that's a hospital ride. Imagine if you did cheat on her. Um, yeah, <laughs> there would right? be a day that goes by. Well, oh, yeah. I'd be going. The be, hospital ride would be mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, what does it say on your shirt today, uh, Charlie? I agree. Well, it's an apropos, actually. It says, I'd agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's very good. You have the best shirts. He does. He does. Oh, what is that? Ship shape? Royal Caribbean. I've been on Royal Caribbean a bunch of times. Yeah, me too. They're great cruise. Yeah. There's mine. Mark, why don't we take a cruise? Yes, you. Here's Penn mine. State. Penn State. Penn State. Yeah, how do they do it? Caribbean or? What? Wait a minute, you're breaking up a little bit. Caribbean. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? I say uh, Caribbean. Neither, neither, I, neither. You, you can use either. I use yeah. Caribbean. I usually say Caribbean. Although Caribbean is fine. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I think, or am I saying it wrong? Depends on whether you say tomato or tomato. Yeah. Neither or either. Yeah, why don't we go take a cruise, Marjorie? That would be nice. I think you guys would enjoy in, in it. honor of Shecky, let's take a cruise. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, you know. I'm gonna take a cruise this year. We should do it at the same time. <laughs> okay. Hey, now we're talking. Hey, we should all take a cruise together. We're already we've already banked our second Alaska cruise in August. You know something? I hear that is the best cruise. Yeah. Everybody has said of all uh, Shecky said to me yeah. of all the cruises he took. And he went to the Galapagos and he went to Antarctica, where he said, of course, the penguin crap smells. They don't tell uh, you about that. But that that he uh he said the best cruise he ever took was the Alaska cruise. Yeah, Are it's you, a lot of fun. I like that cruise a lot. Oh, you've taken that cruise too? Yeah. But you're in Canada. That's you could walk it. <laughs> <laughs> This time we're going out of Vancouver, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, huh? So what happened? How many days is it? It's a 10-day cruise, and it includes the Glacier National Park this time and Sitka, which we did not see last time. Oh, oh that's that's very good. That's Are you spending any time in Vancouver before or after, Vern? We're coming in the day before, and we're going to spend the night in a hotel. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to step away for a moment. I'll be back in 10 minutes. I'll just oh, where leave. are you going? How dare you? My, <laughs> my son just ran out of gas about a oh. mile away. Well, if he had an electric car, he would have run out of electricity. Yeah, <laughs> I'm running out of patience is what I'm running out of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see you in 10 minutes. Yeah, I'll be back. I'm just going to leave it on. Yeah, just leave it on. What the hell? Uh, it's, better well, wait, than, huh? it's better wallpaper than Tony's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried a separate webcam a while ago and I was still having the interference problem. So I went into my settings and I turned off some kind of an anti noise setting and it had cleared it up. Wow. It okay. did. It looks good now. Yeah. A man who can solve his own problems. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. I learned it from you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mandy, where are you going? Home now? I'm going back to the office. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> because I was off Thursday and Friday, so I have a lot of work to catch up. Oh, okay. You're off Thursday and Friday. Why'd you take Thursday and Friday off? Uh, my friend, well, the lady that owns the fitness studio that I go to and that I teach at, she has a condo in Florida, like in, on the Gulf Coast. So you went down there. And, it was, and so she needed to get there and get inspected and she just wanted to buddy that down with her. So. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. What do you, what do you teach, Mandy? Uh, kettlebells and resistance bands. And sometimes I teach a, like a cardio class with uh, like light weights. Oh, oh yeah. Really? So you're 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 into fitness and stuff. Oh, and, and uh, oh, and uh, kickboxing. Tell? Kickboxing. I forgot about that. I teach kickboxing. Too. Oh, I really? Kickboxing. Yeah. Nobody gonna mess with her. No, no. <laughs> no. What? Nobody's gonna mess with you. He said. I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Oh, here, here comes Don Giller. Hello, Don. Awesome. Hello. Yeah. Don Giller. I told him he's got a standing invite. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, Don Giller is a guy who does the, the, uh, posts the Letterman show, a lot of the hey. Letterman. Show. Hundreds of them, 1,500, I think we said last time. Wow. Time. Hello, Don. Hi. I'm Hi. single. Huh? I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie, you didn't tell them, have you? <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. All right. <laughs> and he's funny too. Yep. Maybe he isn't funny. Maybe uh, I'm, I'm, I'm single, is what I am. <laughs> have you always been single? Yes. You know, I, I, I think I admire that. Well, well, because I got married four times. What does that say about me? It, it, it says about um, me I'm pretty hard to live with. That's what it says about me. You know? You're always looking for perfection. That's all. Yes. Eternal yeah. optimist. And since I can't <laughs> find anybody close to the way I am, it's hard to find perfection. Thank you, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, you know, some of the, uh, you've never been married, uh, 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 Don, and you've never been married, Edward. That's right. <laughs> and uh so uh, anybody else here not be married no 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 so that uh, that's uh that's saying a lot i mean shecky he was never married was never married you know and i, I think that i ever ask him why he wasn't married i think he just said he he liked living by himself he liked being able to you know just shut down if he wanted to and not have anybody else there saying what's wrong, you know? And uh, uh, that's an excuse. Do you think so? Yeah. I agree. You know, he wasn't exactly an unhappy guy for it. No. You know? And as he got older, he got used to that, you know? So, I mean, I'd, I've lived with someone and if it were my choice, I'd still be living with her, but that's not the case. I see. So you found somebody you like. Yeah, I mean, there are two people, not at the same time, but there have been two <laughs> strong people. Yeah, I'm trying to think, uh, you know, I mean, I've had some some relationships where I was madly in love, but love is kind of craziness, you know, it's kind of a form of mild insanity, or maybe not even mild. And, uh, you know, so I had these people that I was very much in love with, and, and so on and so forth. But uh you know, I mean, it it didn't. It, I don't think any of them really measured up to Marjorie, oddly enough. Ah, uh, there you go. And I'm only saying that because I don't want to get beaten up after the show. She, she hits me. She hits me a lot. I do. I do. Yeah. Uh, no, but the thing is that I I I I'd like to say. Well, people say, well, you're married to Ronnie. Everybody knows Ronnie. Who knows my shows. And and uh, how was that? And I went, well, that was that, that was a marriage for that time in my life, right? And then my next marriage was another marriage for that time in my life. And Marjorie is a marriage for this time in my life. And actually, I think as of today, technically, uh, we've been married. I've been married to her longer than anybody else. Uh, because I was married to Ronnie for a long time, but it was only because we we separated and then I didn't we didn't divorce for a while. But you know, if you count it to separation, you should feel good. Today you're you're married to me more than anybody else ever was. 
Okay. It shows what kind of fool you are. <laughs> and a glutton for punishment. I'm definitely a glutton for punishment. Yeah. But uh, And we're celebrating tomorrow night. Now, here's the argument. Here, I want you to settle an argument, family argument here, right? She says to me, the other day we're at lunch, and I bought lunch, even though she promised that she was going to buy lunch. Because on the way to the, as we were walking, you said, let's stop here and have lunch. I'll buy. I don't and, remember that last part. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. And so on the way back, because I wanted a free lunch, I said, okay, now we'll stop here. And then the bill comes, and she says, you pay it. I go, wait a minute. You said you were going to pay it. She says, no, you pay it. Okay, I'll pay it. All right. I said, but our wedding anniversary is next week, and we're going to celebrate it on Tuesday rather than on Monday. And who's picking up the check on that one? You and are. She said, I am. And then here's what she said, because this is an anniversary dinner, right? Why am I picking it up? Give them the answer you gave. Because you're the man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't guys, don't you feel like you've been sucker punched all your life by having to always be the guy who picks up who the Who paid for lunch today, Alex? What? Who paid for lunch today? Oh, well, that was very nice of you. Well, so that don't... was only because you were so sentimental over getting matching cortisone shots. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> should, should any of us be here for this? Huh? <laughs> should any of us be here for this? No, well, if you want to hear it, what happened was I have a little arthritis in this hand right here. She has arthritis in every bone in her body, practically, and 90, she's 90% cortisone, all right? I am. So she had her finger was bothering her, so she wanted a shot, and we have the same doctor who gives the cortisone shots. So we went and had a, 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 a what do you call it, an appointment with the doctor, and we did it jointly. And then he gave her, so to speak. huh? Yes, so to speak. So intuitively, so. right? Very good, very good. And uh, so we we had our. our... I, I must say, better be, better than than the description of this argument. I, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> it, in in the tales of arguments, this does not rate very high. I have to tell you, you know, like this is this is uh, you know not not bad. Well, it's, I agree. Not, it's not bad, but she will hate me for it forever. <laughs> you will hold it against me. Well, if I live another 10 years, 10 years down the line, I'll go blah blah blah. And she goes, Remember that day when we were doing this? I'll show? remind you and when it's needed. Exactly. They it's like guys have a spank bank. Women have a gripe bank or something. Where What's they a spank go, bank? Oh, don't even ask. <laughs> Who asked that? <laughs> she asked what a spank bank was. What is it? That's where you bank your spank. Well, it's uh, how can we say this? When men are masturbating, they have to fantasize about somebody. Okay, I get and it. And they go into their spank bank. <laughs> Good enough. Why are you, you telling me you've never, never heard that term before? Spank? No. no. Oh, my God. Right when I was walking by my coworker, <laughs> and she was like, she turned around, she was like, what the hell? Bank, bank. That was so funny. Uh, that's a uh, that's a guy thing. Uh, that's not a, that's it not is a guy thing. thing. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Well, well, you know what we you know we're talking about today, and since we have women here, it's a, it's a good discussion to have. Because Marjorie brought up the fact she says, uh, you know, I was I was talking about how we were talking about Shaggy, you know, who always comes up in my conversation lately. And Marjorie said, well, you. It, it, did you know everything about Shecky? And I said, no, there were a lot of things I did not know about him. He didn't reveal everything to everybody, you know, and he might have revealed things to certain people that he didn't reveal to other people and vice versa. And we've all got to get together and talk, you know, mm -hmm. but she said, uh, so, I mean, she said, uh, what were you saying that it, it, you, it, you, do guys, guys don't commiserate about their relationships and stuff. Women Women discuss things in their yeah. lives. And I said that guys don't. You know, we, we'll get together and we'll say, oh, I'm dating so-and-so, and then you'll leave it at that. Yeah. You know, but you're not going to go into deep detail about whether, uh, you know, she's good or bad in the sack and uh, 
Uh, we, Women we, don't talk about that. Oh, either, yes, you do. Yes, no, that's you not do. true, Alex. Really? Mm -hmm. Paula? Has she ever talked to you about relationships she's had and talked about them as to how good or bad the sex was? I didn't, I didn't know her. I, I wasn't in contact with Marjorie in those years, but I know that she... Oh, I've known her since second grade. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, listen, I know when you lost your virginity, but I don't know about the middle years. Oh, well, tell us about that. <laughs> Ned Langerman. Well, the guy, he was gorgeous. He, he was, was. A he was a beautiful man. <laughs> really? May he rest in peace. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all your, all your, uh, all your, uh, all your ex husbands dead, Marjorie. No, oh, this one. It wasn't a husband. He was my first. He, oh, he was your first. But I mean, how about husbands? How, how many of those? Husband number dead? one, I have no idea. Husband number two is dead. Mm -hmm. And and husband number three, I guess after being married, you wishes he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah, this isn't going to be a good one this year. <laughs> Where are you guys going tomorrow? Uh, up the street, just up the street. Because I can't walk much anymore. You know, it's, I can walk, but it's... And you're just saying that you just because you don't, Alex. Well, I'd like to go to Europe and walk around, and I hope I'll be able to walk around. Either that, or I'll bring a walker with me. Or I'd, I'd, I'd invite. I would invite you two to my place, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's nice. Thanks wow. for the invite. <laughs> Sounds like an invitation. An invitation. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, I, uh, I just, I, I, you know, what I don't get is there's a lot of things that uh, people like Congress preoccupy on. Are, and how many here are, and this isn't really a political discussion, which we don't have political discussions on this show. But you're starting. Uh, no, no, but, but how many here actually think TikTok is a threat to your security? Nope. I haven't a clue. Nah. I do. I you, do. How about Mandy, do you care? Huh? She's she's on mute. Oh. Muted. She's muted. Oh, okay. Uh, um, no, I don't. I think that they our data has been taken other places. I, yeah, I, exactly. I, I I would be sad if it goes away. I think it's fun. So it's fun, and quite frankly, are you getting any Chinese propaganda on TikTok? No. <laughs> no. I mean, unless a bunch of kitties playing with each other or a woman doing a hoochie coochie dance <laughs> or uh, an advertisement for dental, for dental implants. Huh? Well, some of us don't use TikTok, so it's not a problem. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, 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 you just go through it and you look at it and it's fun, you know, something to do when you got nothing to do. You know, I, I, I take too many TikToks. <laughs> Isn't that TikToks? Tic -tac. Oh, the Tic -tacs? Oh. Yeah, no, this is the other thing. Ah. Tic Tac. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just, I just, and I, I think it's kind of like when I watch these Congress people, the most of which their average age is like 99. Yeah. It's like they don't understand technology. They're all anti technology, they're all afraid of technology. Oh, the Chinese are going to get all our home addresses. You know, I don't give a crap at the Chinese. I mean, I being data mined, talk about Facebook, talk about Google, talk about the YouTube. How does YouTube know when I'm using the YouTube channel that I looked up Frank Sinatra last night and now everything that shows up is Frank Sinatra? Yep. I'm worried about that. Major. What? Talk about any major corporation in America. Yeah. 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 But you know, my wife and I will be sitting there talking about something. And then within an hour, I'm looking at my Facebook feed, and there it is that we were just talking about. Google wasn't on, you know, Alexa wasn't on. Well, that happened. I've had that happen, and I don't know how to do it, you know? So, yeah, we're mined. Yeah, we've been mined all of us. <laughs> yeah. So I'm supposed to worry about the goddamn Chinese. Right. What do I care? You know, last last week, 
I had tweeted uh, a screen capture of of Shecky naked on the uh, uh, yeah. on Letterman. <laughs> yeah, and and I got by a the, warning. by the way not just naked but screwing of Xerox machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that that was different. This was this was the the, the shower copier where he was literally naked. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's the one. Yeah. Um, and I got a warning from Twitter that that I was putting up obscene content. <laughs> <laughs> they went out over NBC for crying. Yeah. yeah. And they said, "Do, do you want to appeal?" I said, "I said yes, I want to appeal." This was on NBC in 1985, <laughs> um, and today today they retracted it. Wow. It was yeah. Okay. But that so that made, was so that was bad, but but you know, but uh, uh, talking about guns and talking about violence is not, you know, so, somehow or other. Yeah, that's right. Is that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it always uh, it it bothers me a lot when I get things like that from them, and then I have to write them a letter and yeah. tell them what they did wrong, and then they never write you back. Do they write you back? No, I I, oh, I I got a notification saying that we have rescinded the, the warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and thank you for pointing out our error is what the you know. But it was oh, it was yeah. a it was it was a blanket statement. It wasn't personalized. I mean, if so. he was still alive, how, if Shaky would feel great about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, someone someone said hey, Rick would get a big kick out of that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but I you know I mean um, uh, I I. I I don't know. I just, I just, this whole TikTok thing. And then it, it always goes into anything that has to do with technology. They're like frightened of it. They don't, because they don't understand the true ramifications of that technology. Yeah. And then the questions they ask, it's really fun to see the hearings because they're really stupid. You have really kept up with technology, you know, for someone yeah. in his 80s. I, I mean, that's remarkable. It really is. Well, I, I think I'm lo I'm starting to kind of lose grip of it, you know. It moves so fast. It moves know? so fast. Yeah. I mean, when I think about where I was when I was a kid, I mean, hey, if I had to call my parents, I had to have a I had to have a nickel yeah. and a phone. Okay. And today I just reach it in my pocket, you know, and I call somebody. Or if I want to see anything, I mean, uh, the, it, it it it's amazing to me how far in eighty three years we have come. Okay, you have the combined knowledge of the entire world in your pocket, <laughs> and somehow I kind yeah. of think it was better when I was a kid. Hmm. You know, when I didn't have all these things to worry about. You know, and uh, uh, wor I didn't get spam calls. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, my mother didn't know where I was when I was out riding my bike, and they didn't, know. and they didn't care. Just as long as you were home by dinner, and if you weren't, they sent out the cops to find you. <laughs> you know, check the local creek. Yes. You know, I mean, but uh, no, I mean, when I was a kid, I would say to my mother, you know, this I'm like nine years old, right, Mom? I'm going out. It's okay, be back by dinner. Mm -hmm. I'd go wandering the neighborhood in the hills and I'd be climbing and I'd be doing whatever I did. And I, I, how'd I know what time it was? I looked at the sun <laughs> and where it was on the horizon. Cause you know, or I had, I think I had a wristwatch by then, but I went home and that was it. Parents didn't worry about these things. Mm. Parents didn't leave their kids off with screw, sco at school. They rode their bicycle to school, and they rode their bicycle home, or they walked to school or walked home. Yep, uphill in both directions, of course. I mean, yeah. would, would you want to be <laughs> a kid? Would you Would you want to be a kid today? No. No. I, mean, I no. saw this thing on. Uh, what did we see it on uh, CBS Sunday Morning, where they were talking about the the kind of ramifications of what's happened to kids because of COVID, mm -hmm. and then it's, it's really bad yeah when, when my son was 16 or 17 i remember he had about five or six of his friends over there all sitting in the living room and they were all on their devices some of them talking to each other in the same fucking room <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean i just i don't understand that look at you know they don't have any interpersonal skills anymore at all the, their it, parents it, don't also tell them go out and play true mm -mm. no you know, I mean, how many of you as parents today would let your kid just go out and be home by dinner? No way. Nope. Mm -hmm. Now that's, 
isn't that old really when you think about it compared to uh isn't it really protective i mean my parents were never protective of me they loved me yeah you know oh he's back shit <laughs> he gave him time to have sex you know <laughs> well the world's gotten a lot scarier too yeah well yeah. another school shooting today in nashville yeah, yeah. yeah i saw that jeez that time it was a woman shooter Oh, was it? Really? That's very yeah. rare. Yeah. They good. killed her, didn't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The, the good news is, the good news is, though, there was only one mass shooting today. <laughs> so far, hey. So far. So far, the day it, it, it's isn't over yet. Right. Yeah. right. Hey, can I tell a technology story? Sure, go ahead. Once upon a so time, guys, it was a computer. He's going to come on my other podcast, my men's mental wellness podcast I do. It's a pretty remarkable story. Uh, this time last year, the guy was a 65-year-old exterminator, alone, no uh, no family to speak of, but happy, just, you know, but um, kind of like what you were talking about with, with, with Rick, just content where he's at. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, his sister did the, uh, I don't know if it was Ancestry.com, I don't know which one it was, but she 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 plugged herself into that network and, and, and um she came to him the other day and she said, well, not the other day. It was about four or five months ago. She came to him and said, okay, so uh, I got plugged into this thing and it has this spider web of people who have also been plugged into it. And uh, under you or our brother, there is a descendant. And uh, he found out that he has a 42 year old daughter married with three grandkids and he's like i remember the night i was in winnipeg for a pink floyd concert i remember the woman we didn't even really know each other's names we met during the concert we consummated wow. left Whoa. and uh now six months later the guy has this incredible family and and all these things and his life has completely changed because of this wow and, my yeah. my my ex-wife ronnie which everybody, most people here know because they've seen her on my other shows while she was alive. Uh, in about the last year and a half or so of her life, she got on like Ancestry.com or something like that. And one day she gets this thing saying, well, you're linked to this person and it may be your son. Now, she had had a kid when she was 18 or something like that and gave it up for adoption. Mm. Okay? So she had a kid she never, ever saw, mm. except for maybe the minute it was born. And she got a hold of this guy, and sure enough, it was her son. Wow. And so in the last year or so of her life, she knew her son and her grandson. You know, and all these other things that come with a son, you know, and it was uh, it, it was an amazing thing for her. Hmm. Uh, so I, I can only imagine how that person felt because mm -hmm. you know, I know how she felt when it happened. And she said first she started saying, I don't know that I should get a hold of the kid because I when I was younger, when I was 18, 19, my girlfriend had a kid and gave it up for adoption. In those days, when they gave it up for adoption, it was really a blind adoption. Yeah. You know, um, and uh, you could never find out, you know, where the kid went. And um, somebody once said, I once thought, well, I got a lot of money. I could hire a detective to go out and find out what happened to that kid. And I started it and then I stopped it. And I stopped it for this very reason that, okay, I want to find the kid I had. That's a very selfish thing on my part. Okay. But isn't it really the job of the kid to find me? Because I don't want to suddenly pop into that kid's life and say, hi, guess what? I'm your dad. Well, the kid looks back at me and goes, you're Alex Bennett. My God, where do I kill myself? <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, but, 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 you're, but you're skipping a step. I think, I mean, uh, it's okay for you to find this son does not necessarily mean that uh, i mean it doesn't mean that you need to then take Make the next step and 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 find him uh, isn't that going to be isn't that going to be the natural next step if you go that far yeah but okay. if you're but if you're thinking of the kids 
uh, if you're projecting the kid's response, then then don't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. the, because you say it's a selfish thing. That's one way of looking at it. You're also curious about your life, um, and and at least taking it that far to find out where this person is, that's enough. And and I then. Yeah, but I, you know, there's a certain curiosity on your part that makes you take the next step. Yeah, I, and I'm I not think, sure. and I think it would have been wrong of me to take the next step because this kid, you know, never knew me. Maybe he didn't even wasn't even told he was adopted. That, that, that's yeah, a possibility. Tell him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're you're right that that the kid should also be curious as well. Yeah. Um, but but if if that kid isn't. That's not on you. That's not on him. You okay. Know, well, I did find out who I did find out who the kid was. And Daddy. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you neurotic? And I are you a hypochondriac? Are yes. You, you are. <laughs> no. I think uh, I think one day I found out because I got a call from Howard Stern, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Dad. I think that's what he said to me. Oh, geez. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, once I heard Howard Stern describe his life, you know, and I went, God, you know, he, he even stole my life. Mm. <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, uh, it, it's uh, you know, what do you what do you do in those cases? You know, in her case, she she immediately made contact with him because he also got the same hookup thing, you know. So he, so they kind of were all ready to call each other, but it 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 I she always describes it as a rather kind of weird situation, you know. I mean, here's a kid he gave up for adoption years and years and years ago, fifty years ago, and now here he is. And how do you react to that? You know, <laughs> loads of money. I think a lot of that depends upon whether or not the adoptive parents uh, were honest with the child. Now, you're an adoptive parent, aren't you? We have two biracial children that we adopted, yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's well, obvious that we're not their parents. Yeah, you you didn't have to tell them, hey, guess what? No. We're not really your parents. Yeah, we didn't have to tell them that. But at, what age did you get, at what age did you get them? Our son was five months old when we got him, and that's only because they had to terminate the father's parental rights involuntarily through the court. Mm -hmm. And we got our daughter when she was two months old. Oh, okay. Wow. So you've, you've had those, those, you raised those as your children. Exactly. And my son just turned 43, and my daughter will turn 38 next month. Wow. And they turned and out they're both okay. still single. They're both still single. Uh, <laughs> Wow, that's interesting. But it, 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 you, you, you got along with them really well all their lives, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We did all the parental things. We, well, my wife and I both worked full time, too. So it was a struggle. Well, at that but... time, at that time, I think, you know, you, it, it seems to me like, number one, it seems like you would be a good parent. And it seems to me like once you said these are our kids, those were your kids. Yeah. You know. But so we did have we did have a, a family issue where someone in our family by marriage uh, had given up a child when she was young for adoption, and she got curious and tracked him down. Well, he did not know that he was adopted. And she 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 walks up to his front door one day, and he's already married and had kids of his own and everything, and knocks up on the door and says, "Hi, you're my son." Well, it, it went downhill from there. <laughs> Marjorie, was that the noise outside your door? Your yeah, door? that was 116. Because the funny Street. part is, I heard the sirens and then I heard them in here. And I'm going, <laughs> who's got sirens in their house at the same time? I've got sirens in my house. And then, of course, it was uh, my uh, my ex wife. Uh, <laughs> in the case of the exterminator I was talking about, um, as this girl grew up, the, the narrative was always, well, we don't know who your father is. And, um, and, 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 and so her mom married um, and he passed away and then her mom passed away. And then she met her biological dad. Like she, so she's like, this situation here, it's, it's, a really, it's really quite a neat one. He had no idea she existed. Um, 
and, and and she didn't know either. And if it wasn't for this technology that now exists, like how crazy is that? Well, I mean, how did how did she find him through like ancestry? On, on, she was on Ancestry, and and it made the link the moment his sister went on there. It made the link there that there's there's someone between it's it's, it's either him or his brother, and like again he. He knew exactly the time and the place of when it happened, and and so are uh, they are they close now? Beyond close, like it really? is. It's yeah, and he's a completely changed dude. Like he was here last year, and then he was here this year. He's a completely different guy. Um, <laughs> it's 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 changed his entire life. Like he it's, he it's thought so he was okay, sixty five, and moving forward, the occasional you know date things like that. But he had very much a homebody, and now he's a completely. He's got a. He's plugged right into the family. Well, I'd make a wonderful movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't wait to have him on the on the on he cast. He's going to tell the whole story. Now, Marjorie and I. I mean, I met Marjorie. Usually, most of the women I've known in later life have been mothers. Okay, uh, and uh, you know they had a couple of kids or whatever, and usually grown up. You know, uh, and. Um, this was in later life and early life. Uh, they were all in high school. But anyway, uh, <laughs> no, it, what happened was, is that uh, they uh, they were always had kids and things like that, which, you know, was always nice. I always, I appreciated uh, single mothers, for instance. Anybody who would take, just ch do with their life and put up with, you know, having to raise a kid, you know, and giving up of their life to do that. I always thought it was one of the most wonderful things I could possibly think of. But Marjorie, I then met Marjorie and, and later in life, and I met somebody else just like me who never had any kids or ones that we could write a letter to, you know, and. So we remain selfish. Basically, I think selfishness was part of it. You yeah, know. of course. But you never had, you went through life and, and both of us, you know, I I was capable of having kids. She was capable of having kids, but neither of us did. Unless, as I say, when I was younger, it was by accident. Uh, and and so it, we are different people for that. You know, and I found that I have more in 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 common with Marjorie than I did with any of those other women, even though they had kids and I liked them and they were good friends and so on and so forth. She understands being single and not having kids, and she understands, you know, not going that far, and so it, it it's a, it's an interesting, you know, relationship that way. I have heard from uh, people in their twenties uh, that uh, those and thirties that that there are uh, a lot more people that make that kind of uh, of uh, decision not to have children. Well, you know, when we were younger, Paula, when Marjorie was younger, there was a time when Marjorie was younger, by the way. I just want to let you all know that. <laughs> um, we, you know, um, these things, you were you were expected to get married, have kids. You know, well, that absolutely. was, that, absolutely. you were not successful unless you did that. You know, and so I took did the marriage part that God knows I did the marriage part, but <laughs> I didn't ever do having the kids part, and uh, neither did Marjorie. Marjorie's been married how much? Three times? This is your third marriage, right? Yeah. You're, you're my fourth. Um, and and uh, you know we've never we've never had that uh, uh, that that we've never had to deal with that. So it's it's strange that I found somebody later in life who didn't have any kids, you know. And uh, so did no you catch help from your parents for not having kids? What? Did you catch help from your parents from not having kids? I did. I always got it from my mother every now and then. Am I, what am I going to be a grandmother? Well, that's what my mother used to say. Yeah, that's that's the that's the guilt trip Jewish mothers give you. Catholic mothers too. Huh? Catholic mothers too. <laughs> yeah. Wait, and when am I going to be a grandmother? Well, you know, when you get another kid. I don't know, you know. <laughs> but I would, yeah, I used to get that from my mother all the time. You know, and I went, look, you know, it's not meant to be, you know. So if I have kids, I'll have kids. Right, Edward Berger? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Whenever I want affirmation on anything, I go to Edward. That's right.
<laughs> so you never had any kids either, right, Edward? And how old no, are you now? No, you? I'm seven. I'm seventy-one now. Yes, yeah, seventy-one. Never been married. Never had any kids. Nope. That's pretty good. And uh, you've never had any kids, right, uh, Don? Um. That's a different story altogether, right? Yeah, that, that this should be offline. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it, 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 the thing is that uh, okay, so uh, but you never been married, correct? Okay, so you at least have one experience, but not the other, is what I'm saying. Um. Well, <laughs> I think this is something Don doesn't want to talk about. Because <laughs> he knows what videos on YouTube can do to your life. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I have NDAs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, let me see here. So, uh, But thank you for asking. No, no, I just, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, thank you for uh, not revealing it, Dad. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Wait a minute, who could be who could be Don's son here? Well, really, how old are you, uh, Chisholm? Forty-seven. Forty-seven. You, and you're how old, uh, Don? Uh, seventy-two. Okay, Don. You talk go. to your dad. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Except I, I was in Canada once, but that was in Montreal and Quebec. Yeah. So yeah. Nowhere near this guy. <laughs> yeah. I spent I spent a whole three days in Montreal with a pinched nerve in my neck. Oh, well, that was you. Yeah, that's my that's my whole trip to Canada. Jeez. Yeah. How long ago? All oh, this was years ago. I was for the Mon Montreal uh, uh, what do you call it? festival? Comedy festival. Mm. Uh, and just for laughs. Hmm. Just for laughs. Yeah. Yeah. So eighties. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. In fact, I hung out with Morty there. Oh, wow. Yeah. He said there. Yeah. Morty used to go there every year to scope out the comedians and I'm sure to get laid. So, you know, it was Morty. Uh, <laughs> Bob Morton was the producer for the Letterman show until, did he leave or did they get rid of him? I think they got rid of him, didn't they? Uh, yeah, Dave fired him. Dave fired him. Yeah. What was it over? Do you know? Do you remember? Um, uh, he wasn't, what I understand, because I don't know if this is truth or not, <clears throat> Uh, he wasn't committed as fully to the show as David would have liked him to be. Oh, okay. In other words, he had other stuff going. Yeah. As well. Yeah. But he had been with Dave, what, since? Um, since uh, since uh, 82. 82, when they got um, uh, what's And then he, he left in 87 to produce uh, the Max Headroom show, mm -hmm. uh, the talk show. And then he came back on the condition that he produced the show, that he become the, the producer and, and it was a good excuse to to uh, retire Barry Sand. Yeah, Barry Sand was the producer for a short time. Yeah. Well, he, he was, was no, he was- The guy who did SCTV. Barry Sand uh, was brought in to produce the, the morning show in 1980. Mm -hmm. And in 81, he did SCTV. And in 82, he came back to do Dave. Yeah. And then when they decided to get rid of him, Morty yeah, too. But, but he was there for five. I mean, he was on late night for five years from 82 to 87. And then, and then he left. Yeah. Anyway. Or was yeah. left. <laughs> but anyway, I spent time with Bob Morton. And, you know, while I had a pinched nerve. So and how's that for, you know. Anyway, <laughs> you know, uh, I really, I just oh, love this group of people. Why don't you just come on over to our house right now? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, it's amazing to me that Zoom has been a process whereby a bunch of people like to get together once a week and feel a togetherness, you know, uh, and uh, not having Shecky here, of course, is is the difference because he used to be here every week. Uh, and, and so that hit us all, I'm sure, every one of us, just simply because even though you never met the guy, you spent Mondays with him. And that's you know, I I I think about him every day. I, I don't know why, because we weren't that close. But I but I but for some reason he, he he pops up into my brain. How many times do I mention him a day, Marjorie? A lot. Yeah, yeah. Almost as much as you mention your illnesses. 
<laughs> oh, by the way, it's been over four weeks now, and I've yet to hear from the blood doctor about the results of my blood test. But, Here we go. But he got all his money. He got all his money from Medicare and from my insurance company. So I hope he's happy spending it. Okay. Anyway. Hey, listen, good seeing you, Charlene. Always nice having you here. I can't believe you're married that long. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> you know what happened in the old days? They would say, they say, how old are you? How many years have you been married? And you say like 43 years. And then the audience would clap. <laughs> now, really, I mean, it, it, aren't you supposed to stay married? You know, why are you applauding? You should boo the person who says, I've only been married four years. years. What? Because we know how hard it is to stay married for 43 years. Yes, exactly. Very forgiving person over there, ladies and gentlemen. Very <laughs> forgiving. Hmm. I told my Chris husband that. You won't how, believe how, did, how did your son do with his car? Oh, uh, fine. He, I picked him up. He's going to go put gas in it. He'll get a, get a can. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like at 27 years old, you think maybe at this point he'd figure this shit out, right? <laughs> <laughs> It never ends, Lynn. He thinks, no. he thinks he, he, I think he thinks E means everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, all at once, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you so much to our, our good friend, uh, Paul Levin. She's just, you know, she's a delight. And we, when are you coming to visit us again? As soon as I can. Okay, good. Uh, Charlie Wallace, hey. nice seeing you here. Always nice seeing you here. Uh, it's the one time he can do it too because he doesn't have to coach. Uh, no, it's during the day. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Chisholm, thank you so much. By the way, you can see his interview with me. It's on the on demand section of our of GabNet. That was and I you, liked it. I, that was nice. It was, it was nice hearing about your career that that I really didn't know much about. Yeah, uh, and it was nice to hear you two talk about Rick. Yeah, mm. uh, it was it, and it was a wonderful. Uh, it was a wonderful conversation. It was a good interview. Absolute honor for me. Happy anniversary, Alex and Marjorie. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy anniversary, Marjorie. Happy anniversary. Your best Alex. to my my best to your husband. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somewhere along the line, we lost Mandy. Where'd oh, she go? Yeah. I guess she oh. just had, she had things to do. Yeah. Anyway. Love you, Mandy. Yeah, we love you, Mandy, and we love you, Scott Boddicker. <laughs> Vernon Nunn, thank you Don Giller, thank you everybody give a big wave goodbye and we'll let, let, end the show with Edward Berger who signs us off by saying that's all folks <laughs> bye everybody bye have a great week <laughs>